Kenya, my motherland. In this country, there was born a power woman and a powerhouse. My name is Miss Mweni, and this is my YouTube channel. Welcome. So, in the count of uh, one, two, three, and as we do that, I would like uh, you to just get hold of something uh, and, and just, you know, bless, bless that till number, like after that, we start with our very own. So, in the count of one, two, three, we unveil the till number of the radio. I think because you know it runs in the blood and we have a doctor here in the name of uh, Dr. Michael Magoha so he'll be my first guest to the panel thank you very much so a round of applause to Dr. Michael Magoha as he comes kindly thank you very much DJ give us some good music why are you making uh, Dr. Michael walk like an old man and he's very young and energetic <laughs> thank you very much so you can wave to us we'll appreciate thank you sir you can just have a seat. So, next on the panelist, we have a beautiful guest of honor. So, she's a journalist, a very interesting character, celebrated journalist in the country, all over the world. A round of applause for Betty Charlo, kindly. Thank you very much. So, and next, we will have the principal kindly to just join us right now, Professor James Machoki. Round of applause for him. Thank you. Yes. That is good. And lastly, we'll have Professor Mungai. A round of applause for him too. Thank you very much. So a quick one, we'll start with a brief introduction. You know, we just assume that people know you, so I think it's good that uh, we just kick start. So I'll start on my far uh, left, that is with uh, the beautiful Betty Charlo. So she'll just motivate us and tell us who she is briefly and the role of media in the medic world. You know, it's very, yeah, it's very important, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Mweni, you're my friend, and I'm super proud of what you've, you're, you're doing and what you've done today. Thank you. It is completely commendable. Congratulations, and Thank you. Um, we'll keep supporting you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gents. Okay, there's no energy. <laughs> good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I think that's more like it. Um, it's such a pleasure being here. My name is Betty Kialo. I'm a media personality. Uh, but currently unemployed. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I'm still a media personality, um, and I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm a mom. One of the things that my mom wanted me to do um, is to be a doctor, but <laughs> my grades didn't allow. <laughs> so I'm so happy that at least I can tell her that I know a number of, of doctors. serious doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say it is uh, a complete honor to be in the midst of greatness because... Um, you're holding this country together and we appreciate all the efforts on behalf of the Kenyans who are not here. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, especially during this pandemic. We are seeing you, we are appreciating you, and we'll continue to support you. Um, what I can say is that, um, or should I let the other? Introduce, okay. yes, okay. thank you, <laughs> yes. Professor, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, um, my name's uh, Professor Peter Mungai Ngugi, I'm from the University of Nairobi College of Health Sciences, and um, I'm a surgeon, I'm a urologist, I'm a transplant surgeon, and um, yes, I've been teaching at the Department of Surgery for the last close to 30 years. Um, I come here to say that doctors 
live in this society and they're as vulnerable as the patients they have, as the patients they take care. Just two days ago, a classmate of mine died. Yeah, he's a surgeon and died of what is going on here. So we must protect this, our young people, in the best way we can. The doctors you have from the University of Nairobi, the likes of Michael Magoha, who is teaching with us in the Department of Surgery, are the best of the best this country can ever have. You re you've all had during KCP and KSE, I will go and do medicine. I'll go and do neurosurgery, and they'll be taught by Magoha. Those people must be protected. Those are our crown jewels that the whole country must put the best foot forward to make sure we do not lose to their efforts to save the country. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Magoha, Dr. Michael Magoha. I'm a consultant neurological surgeon working at the Kenyatta Hospital mostly and other hospitals. I'm also a lecturer at the University of Nairobi. I guess uh, what I bring to this panel is uh, some unique insight. As one of the, as we say, the young doctors below 60, I've been on the front lines ever since COVID-19 hit. So we've had to suffer with things like paying for PPEs ourselves and going through because uh, car accidents don't stop, brain tumors don't stop despite what's happening. I would like to affirm, uh, I do, I empathize with students that you want to be there. You want to be there on the front line. And uh, there, is a, there is a slight distinction. People like me have sworn an oath, though, like the people he here. It's not a joke. It's serious. We, put, we do put our lives on the line as we speak. I do know two young colleagues, myself, with cardiomyopathy, secondary to this disease. And I don't wish that on anybody. So as students want to come back, uh, we need to be prepared, we need to work slowly and make sure that when they come back that uh, nothing happens to them because every life is sacrosanct. Nobody is more important than the other. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I bring two things to this particular function. One, it's really why we are here and the what has been sent since we came here. And so what has, was said when we invited you here, COVID-19 pandemic to save the lives of the doctors. And I believe also certainly the faculty as we process our students towards the final stage of graduation one, but also there are students you need to go and proceed to the next year. So it's about ensuring that in these very challenging times that the leadership of the College of Art Sciences is seen hard and is seen to be in the forefront in supporting that which must be done. So therefore, the message uh, to answer that is that leadership and leaders, therefore, are known best when they are leading those that they lead during a crisis like this one. So this is just the first step towards that demonstration of that passionate and visionary leadership at the college. And leadership also is not about an individual. It's about the college management board, all members are here. And it's about also leadership through delegation when COVID-19 pandemic struck us, I had no doubt in my mind that the college shall survive through delegated leadership. And that's why we quickly uh, formed the College of Old Sciences and Kenyatta National Hospital COVID-19 Pandemic Containment and Research Committee, who are really the brains behind this function we are having here. So this is part of that leadership. Uh, and so therefore, and that's why I was very firm in assuring the students that they shall be examined, they shall be taught, and they shall be promoted to the next year, as we also admit more students. 
and we will make sure that we will not be going back to cry and whine to the Minister of Health, because I know the resources to support everyone who is in health care, supporting 45, 46 million Kenyans, may not be adequate. So that's one. But also the other message is to say this is the first step to our self-sustainability as a college. Most of us sitting here have benefited from scholarships from outside. To me, it can also be the reverse that we become those that support our own students, provide scholarships. One of the students mentioned about support school fees. I think this whole idea of waiting for the Western donors to offer scholarship to our own students and that's why I called Kenya. Kenya Johnson Kenya, the Dean of Students, is one young person I know very well. I have had many discussions with him, including international travels with him. Um, because I want to work with him very closely to see how can we beef up scholarships to our own students. Because as a principal, I've seen very many talented kids who can't pay school fees. And sometimes it's like you want milk from a stone. The parents can't. And these are very talented. And they can't. So I want also to say this is just one agenda, to raise funds for COVID. But moving forward, we'll be raising funds for many aspects, including to support needed students, to support faculty to publish, to grow their research pot potential, and also to support the government in many other ventures. So the college, therefore, has a reform agenda besides and supporting the one of the VC to reposition ourselves as a global giant, which looks as healthcare and the training of the healthcare capacities across the board as our business, not that one of anybody else. And that's how I, that's a message I want to share during this meeting also. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll go straight to Q&A. So I'll only have uh, a question for each of you. And then I'll also pick a question from the uh, our viewers and our listeners. I mean, sorry, viewers. We are used to TV. <laughs> to our listeners here right now, our guests. So uh, straight to my first question to Betty Charlo. So this is my question to you. Do you feel like uh, the doctors are giving their best in the society? You as a, medic, uh, as, as a media personality. Right. Yes, are they treating patients right? Are they, uh, because you are out here, you get a lot of issues when it comes to, I'm not, we have cases of negligence in hospitals. We have uh, case, cases of doctors overworking and, and being, yes, uh, kind of uh, being overworked at some, at some time, some point. The other day at Kenyatta University, at Kenyatta Hospital, you saw guys were striking. They don't want to go to work. So you as a media personality, uh, what will be your, your take? What's your take on that? Right. Um, I mean, doctors, doctors are gems. <laughs> That's yes. what I said earlier. Mm. Um, uh, definitely, there have been quite a number of issues which I've personally covered yeah. um, with regard to um, the things that have gone wrong you know, in, in that particular um, industry. Um, but I can, I can first talk about the things that you know, are being done right, and especially during um, this pandemic and even the role that doctors have played you know, in terms of... It's okay. <laughs> In terms of uh, the, the role that the doctors have played in terms of, you know, knowledge and information to people. I remember when we had the first cases, there was a lot of questions, especially from, you know, from Kenyans. And um, as the media, you know, they look up to us for these answers. They look us up to us to look for the doctors, for, to look for, you know, the ladies and gentlemen who are here to just, you know, give more information about this. And you can imagine they were trying to do that at, at, at a time that nobody actually had these answers. And mm -hmm. I remember, you know, interviewing quite a number of doctors and as much as they did not know exactly what is happening and how to even, you know, approach this pandemic, there was still a lot of information that, you know, they were giving in, with regard to what we should do, the things that we should do, the masks, you know, the sanitizing, why we need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and even this information, we could be able to translate even ourselves to the society, to the communities, to our children, our elderly parents, you know, back at home. And therefore, the role of doctors completely critical and, um, you know, cannot be, um, you know, overemphasized. You know, they've done a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look 
forward to having more doctors, you know, earlier on when the, doc when the medical students were here, you know, just listening to them and the passion that they have, I know that as, as a country we are actually in good hands, in safe hands, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Betty. Uh, I think that's a very good answer. So uh, to Professor Mungai, to you as a, as a doctor, you know you have, um, you, you see patients every day and your patients are very vulnerable. And uh, what are the challenges that you've been facing uh, as a doctor during this time of COVID-19 and uh, with the issues of training to the, with the students back in the uni at the college? What are the challenges that you have faced so far? Thanks, Mweni. Um, medicine has always been challenging, but it has been particularly challenging during this time. Patients going to clinics have been told you may catch diseases, you may catch COVID-19 when you go to the hospital. So they would wish you can call them and give them their prescription and examine them through the phone. But this is not going to be possible. And when they come to your office, they are terrified. They see each other as enemies. That is the first time that we are seeing patients fearing each other. So they can't even talk to each other because they don't want to catch COVID-19. And it is true they can get COVID-19 from my office or from the clinic. If you go to the Kenyatta National Hospital Clinics where we teach and where we train, you will have to come and queue first and then we will see you. We will not ask you to put a PPE as you come from home so that you do not infect us. And doctors are used to relating with patients. So the fear in patients has been big and it is still there. Then there is how we interact with patients. This is a new normal. It may be difficult for you when you go to church that you can't greet patients. But for us, the textbook of medicine I was taught I was taught when a patient comes to you, the first thing you do is you greet them. You greet them by hand and you welcome. That creates a relationship between you and the patient. But the patient now cannot even see you. The patient coming to you does not know your face because you are wearing a mask. So the patient doesn't know you and you may not remember the patient because this mask hides very many things and sometimes you find you don't know this patient. So you are understanding, you are seeing the emotion of the patient is lost. So the patient doctor relationship has been changed by COVID-19. I'm hoping and praying that that will go. And then now the last one is the training. The teaching that I remember, the, what I do, what I practice today is what I was taught by my teachers many of them still around in this country. They teach you how to talk to the patient, how to examine. Before we send the patient for investigations, the most important thing is to examine. How safe is it for you to examine a patient who is coughing? Like I said in another interview we did with Mweni, when you want to look at the back of the throat and I really sympathize with the dentist, you tell the patient cough. Now you're telling the patient to cough at you to give you COVID. So how, how, do you, uh, how, do, how do you stop that? So this is a, a real challenge that has come in our country today. And I don't know how many people have put in an N95 mask for five hours. By the time you have removed that mask, you are sick, you are having a headache, you are a patient yourself. So even me as a doctor, I am challenged by COVID-19. And then there is the fear by doctors themselves. Just the other day, there was something going on social media of uh, some, a body that woke up uh, during a funeral. Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> we are scared of examining patients. So the, the true doctor of my time was one who touched, was one who talked, and one who lifted the patient. I'm not used to this new normal where when the patient coughs, you run away. That is the new challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ari. That was a bit interesting. <laughs> to, <laughs> uh, I, I know everyone here who is a doctor is wondering, uh, you think that's a challenge you've posed to them? 
eh, indirectly yeah, so that they can start uh, looking at, stop being scared, especially Diana. I know she deals with children. Eh? Yes, anyway, so uh, doc to Dr. Michael Magohan. I believe you've been a student at the University of Nairobi, and uh, you've had an interesting journey. And today we are trying to relate uh, your story to also, I, I know you're still a student, that's what you're gonna tell me. <laughs> Kinda, of life, okay, yes. So um, <laughs> probably just briefly, uh, what was your journey back then? And do you think, uh, what were the challenges you went through uh, as a student? And uh, how did you conquer that? Just to motivate Maina, Timama, and uh, Edgar. This, this tends to happen a lot, uh, especially when you're one of the younger consultants. Mm -hmm. You keep being seen as a student. Unfortunately, I, I've been a consultant for some while now. Uh, regarding my journey as a student, uh, some of the things have already been touched upon. The doctor-patient relationship is sacrosanct. You have to examine someone. You have to talk to them. You have to know what's going on. If you look at the WHO definition of health, it's complete mental, physical, psychological well-being. That's our job. It's not just to listen and to write. As a student, we had the luxury of spending time getting to know your patients. I'll be honest, and it's the same in every university worldwide. It's dependent on you. You know, there's pedagogical and antagogical learning, and they keep shifting uh, as university students, not realizing that at some point, it's their impetus to find out what's happening, because when you graduate, you are by yourself. The bad habits that you pick up as a student, those are yours. No lecturer can come and tell you, you must do this, you must do this. Because in university, you're an adult, and you should act as an adult. That's one thing that tends to be lost uh, sometimes. The other thing uh, um, which I will say regarding their journey, of course, this is happening all over the world. It's not just us. And we have unique problems which will be to us in Africa. But uh, let me not say Africa, in Kenya. But we have to state the facts, regardless of what people feel or what is happening. At present, there are over 500 positive medical personnel with the disease. Uh, I am a Christian, and God in his infinite wisdom and justice has made most of them asymptomatic. But it's always a few that go down. And that is the issue that people don't understand. When it comes to dealing with uh, diseases like uh, COVID-19 or any popular disease, the, there's a problem of public understanding versus pathology, pathology of the disease. If you take anything just like even a novel virus like the HIV virus when it came up, if you just looked at them after three months, you'd say nothing is happening to these people. It's only up till about 10 years where you started to notice that this is progressing to immunodeficiency. So when we're dealing with a novel virus, there's always lots of pressure from everywhere. And there, there are two things which I have seen which I don't want to affect students. The number one thing I'll call is chauffeur knowledge. When you see things being spoken about all the time on TV, if there's a blog, if there's a media personality who has said it, and they speak like they know what they're talking about, there's a feeling that the public will understand what's happening. But that is not what is happening. You as the medical students, the pharmacists, the doctors, the dentists, you are different. You are becoming professionals, and you know more than what the average person knows. So now is a time for you to make yourself better. Uh, you have to figure out how to make something good out of this condition which has come to us. So it can be a blessing, though you might feel that you had all of these plans, but we can't change what is happening. Mm. So that's what I would say. The second thing, apart from the chauffeur knowledge, there's something called base rate neglect, and this is cuts across all professions. It's really bad in doctors and lawyers, I believe. We only see what we, what we know. The joke that all the professors, like he told me, I don't know if he remembers, is you know you only see what you read last night. If that patient comes, everything he has was what was in the book. Mm. And when it comes to this situation, that's what people are doing, but people are seeing that things are not that bad. Things are okay. This guy got sick, but now he's okay. They don't think past that. And students with youth, they call it the springtime of youth, there's lots of energy and fire to just move, mm. which is good. It's beautiful. Don't let anybody squash that. Be yourself, be angry, be aggravating because you are learning and you push those ahead of you to do better. So I would say I, I commend the three of them. Keep asking the questions. Don't be pushed down. If you need help from the staff who like to make noise, we're here as long as we, as long as we don't get fired. Uh, but uh, I, think, I think that's all I have to say regarding this. Okay. So do you think the generation right now, we are lazy? Young people, are we lazy? 
that uh, that sounds like a trap. Yeah. I, <laughs> I wouldn't say since I am technically a millennial, uh -huh. technically still. Uh, I wouldn't say that we're lazy. Or do we, we like complaining a lot? Um, I, uh, yeah. That's yeah. Well, yes and no. Yes. The one thing we have to understand is time is cha times are changing, mm -hmm. and people feel more empowered, mm. and there are many ways in which people can get recognized. Nope. So, in my humble opinion regarding that, times have changed, and since we have more avenues to be heard, it can come across that we're making lots of noise. That being said, there are people who take any chance to talk and make uh, mountains out of molehills, but I don't think that's a generational thing. I think we just need to address and notice, despite the noise they make, are they following the proper channels? If they're following the proper channels, like the students here, then they deserve to be heard. If people are going outside the proper channels, making noise, not giving any solutions, and just making noise, then it is just making noise. But I don't think it's a generational thing. That being said, to the older generation, uh, you also have to understand that, you know, things like Twitter exist. People like to shout. The internet exists. You're learning over Zoom over the first for the first time. So if, you have to understand that people will come at you differently, and it's not the way you were before. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. A round of applause for Michael, kindly. That was good. Thank you very much. Back to the principal right here. You know, today you've been uh, really... <laughs> We have been on your case, but it is your day. <laughs> yes, it yes, is I'm your day. It. You're enjoying yeah, it. I'm enjoying it. Yes, a lot. thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, to you, the, my question will be: uh, Having had the students and uh, the, the Q and A to you, uh, do you think, as a principal of the University of Nairobi College of Health Sciences, mm -hmm. have you done enough to support the students? Uh, well, that's uh, that's a very good question. May I? say it that way, because um, at the end of the day, leadership is about facilitation, is about support, and is about responding to your employers. For us, the employers are our students, all of us, all the faculty, including myself. Uh, when this COVID-19 pandemic struck this country and the whole world, I think a lot of us who are caught pretty unaware in terms of how even to proceed and so on and so forth. But uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we have lived, lived up to what we are as a college. We did inherit a college which was fairly stable in many ways. Uh, we do know our current CS, Professor Magua, uh, really set the pace when he was the principal of that college. He put in a foundation which we still continue to enjoy. He proceeded to being the vice chancellor. And he also further put the foundation. And so even when the COVID-19 came up, we did that we could at that time. And we have continued to do. Today is a testimony that we have not been able to put in place all that which we should have done. Because I also recall all of us sitting here will appreciate that we are living in a country, in an environment where the resources, particularly the PPEs, and more so that which makes you buy those PPEs, including even the processes of buying them, including also the money you need. I do recall when we procured or tried to procure uh, PPEs through our other resources as a college, uh, we didn't realize we needed permission from the Minister of Health. But somehow, we managed to fight our way, and we got uh, registered through KEMSA, the famous KEMSA, everyone is talking, this was way back in April, <laughs> the famous KEMSA, so that we are able to procure some PPEs for my staff and the students. Uh, which were distributed by the vice chancellor sometimes in May mm. at the School of Dental Sciences and the University Health Services. So, yes, uh, to answer your question very specifically, we have done that which we could have done under the circumstances, mm. but with all humility, we are saying we need support okay. from the rest of Kenyans, okay. you included. Uh, of and course, you have um, done a <laughs> tremendous job in supporting us. Thank you. But as I said earlier on, 
was tuning you. Mm. It's delightful. Mm. Yeah, I'm so happy to see our own CS has come all the way from far away to join us today. Mm. All the personalities here. Thank to you. me, this is very satisfying, and I really appreciate everyone of us sitting and, here. Yeah. And you. just right there. Uh, so those are the challenges that you have, and the, the main reason why we are having this campaign is to support uh, a doctor and to save a life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, could you kindly briefly, because this is your day, and yes. this is the, yes. the it's an opportunity that you have to make us understand. Kindly briefly, just in a nutshell, uh, tell us what what drove you to do this apart from uh, we've had your reason behind it mm -hmm. and and uh, why the initiative save a doctor save a life well it uh, comes from my strong belief that uh, strong institutions and the challenges are an all inclusive strategy an all inclusive exercise and we also watched very keenly to see where we could have been supplied, from where we could have been supplied with the PPEs, but also the need for the students and the faculty to be protected. I watched quite a number of students turning positive that I can tell you. I visited some of them in ICU just to watch. It was, it was touching to me. But also, we have lost some professors in this university. That's a, it's in the public domain. And uh, some of them from my college, I know some of the faculty who are positive. To see, uh, po we have also lost some doctors, very young doctors, the age mate of our kids. And that was my next uh, question. And so really mm -hmm. that loss of our young life, you know, at very, the potential we are losing to train a doctor is a high output. It is expensive. So to lose one or a student who has not even graduated because of a preventable cause in the name of COVID-19, it's not acceptable. And who else really can lead this exercise in terms of preventing uh, Kenyans getting infected? If the College of Old Science is the one which is charged with the responsibility of even providing the direction, the college is supporting the ministry in all aspects of that which is happening at the Minister of Health. Charity should begin at all. We shouldn't have any student getting COVID-19 infection, any faculty, because we know how to. But I believe they need to be provided with the right PPEs. The students I know have been very vocal in terms of the support they are getting. Uh, and so we want to stop any more students getting infected. We want to stop any more faculty being infected. We want to stop, above all, any more deaths mm -hmm. among professional doctors. But also as we are preventing doctors, remember they come from homes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure their relatives and the others who are not doctors are being infected. Mm -hmm. And so we want to really demonstrate to the whole world that we can stop this pandemic mm -hmm. and, and more so and death uh, fatalities from doctors and others. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. So uh, right now, I'll give you the opportunity to just I'll pick a question, one or two, just for my panelists, a, a quick one. So Sylvia will help me move the microphone around kindly. Uh, so if there's anyone who has a question to my panelists, I'll really appreciate. Wakurugenzi, hakuna swali? No question. Thank you very much. Okay, I appreciate. So, final. This will be my last question to the panelists. Uh, and it's literally a question of, uh, or I would like to hear your message of hope during these difficult times of COVID-19. Yes. So I'll start with you, Betty. All right. Um, good evening. Good afternoon again. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You. So, like I was saying, um, this is a great initiative, and as a media personality, as somebody who has quite a number a number of followers and uh, influence, a bit of influence. Um, mine is just to say that I'm definitely going to support this cause. I'm going to ask, you know, Ken because Kenyans love doctors. Kenyans, mm. as Kenyans, we love our doctors. Mm. Um, and we also, you know, um, love to give. 
So it is just actually um, just crafting a message whereby people will see this side. You know, so it, this was so insightful. Yes. Um, from everything you've said, Kenyans do not know some of the things that were you know talked about here, and it's a duty for me as a media personality to make sure that some of the things that were said here are going to be you know you know said and announced out there so that people know this. You know, people appreciate you know what doctors are doing more. I didn't even know that you're scared of us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it is. So so profound what you talked about and I'm very happy that I got this opportunity to be here and will do everything to support the cause. Thank you very yeah. much. So, Dr. Tari, Professor uh, Mungai. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Let me first of all start by saying I'm proud I am Kenyan. This, this is uniquely Kenyan that we can come together and think of how to help that which is precious, the crown jewels, like I said, the doctors of this country, most of the medical students and everybody, are the cream de la cream, as the French would like to say. Then the other thing is that we need to know the numbers. Now that I have the microphone, I'll let you know how many trainees are we talking about so that we do not just float a number. We are talking about 5,400 students of the College of Health Sciences that we need to give PPEs. So if you're going to give money, you need to give money enough to have 5,200 students so that this country can produce. The College of Health Sciences, and my principal here would bear me out, produces the biggest number of doctors in this country. In fact, in session paper number 10 in 1965, it said that assuming that the University of Nairobi will produce will take in 80 students per year. We expect it to produce 80 doctors per year. We have surpassed that contract with Kenya, and we are producing 350. So I'm asking Kenya to protect that which belongs to it. The biggest postgraduate programs, the production of the surgeons, pediatricians, anesthetists, all those are mostly done at the University of Nairobi. Post-masters doctors in this country are only produced, I dare say, by the University of Nairobi College of Health Sciences. So that is the cream. Even those who go to research institutions are from us. The biggest research output, medical output, is from the College of Health Sciences. Please help the principal keep these people alive by donating. Kenyans should help us help Kenya. We have a doctor probably in every hospital in this Republic of Kenya. So we need, yes, Mweni, what do I need? What am I asking Kenya to do? To secure its borders by providing for these Kenyans so that they can provide service and with this and God on our side, there will be no COVID in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, very quickly, thank you. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. I, I'd like to associate myself with the comments of the other panelists and uh, in the same vein, I am proud and I'm proud because of a couple of things. One, I'm proud to be a Kenyan. Two, I'm proud to be a doctor working during this period in Kenya. Three, I'm proud to be a member of staff at the University of Nairobi. And four, I'm proud to be in the Department of Surgery, and this is why. As you can see, <laughs> we take initiative. We don't wait for things to happen. I think the students can see that everybody here cares about you, and we want you to move forward. And instead of waiting and begging, people are taking initiative and asking you to help. It's a call to arms. And being a Kenyan, we know what Kenyans do when they come together. And you can come together, help us. You know exactly where things are going. We are completely transparent. You know what this is for. And it's to help Kenyans in the long run. And being that, there's not much else to say that I'm proud. And you can be proud too. So just come on over. Thank you very much, Michael. Yeah. The principal. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, let me certainly, though my heart also, uh, uh, identify myself with that which has been said. But in terms of the numbers, let me also, because to take a student through, we also have faculty, close to 
1,000 or so. But we have other support staff also who are part of us as we teach and as we also examine these students. Uh, and so the numbers are huge. We are talking about in the college, we should be supported. We are talking of roughly close to 6,000 uh, staff who may require some form of support moving forward. In this new normal, I believe everyone will be supported to some extent. Uh, and therefore, I am very hopeful myself because I have a very passionate uh, uh, complement of staff from the lowest level possible to the highest level possible in the college. But also, we, my strong hope comes from the fact that the university management, starting from the council to the university executive board to vice chancellor himself is very supportive. But above all, the CS is here. His presence here uh, represents, is a big statement even before he opens his mouth to say anything. And we really want to appreciate you, sir, for that commitment. He has always encouraged us, I do recall, and, and that's why I feel very confident, he even came to the office mm. to encourage me and tell me, move on. Wow. Don't worry. And uh, uh, sir, I showed everyone that you signed in the visitor's book just to prove that you came. And you know your signature is unlike any other. So, and they, they felt very good you came to encourage us that uh, we should teach, we should move on. Uh, this is about uh, four weeks ago. So to me, I don't think as a principal, I could have asked for more support. Uh, and more so now when I see this today, I mean, I'll sleep up to Sunday tonight when I go <laughs> home, because I know game shot and uh, we are done. Thank you. So for me really is to feel, this is a, a rebirth as a college. Mm. And I really want to thank all of you sitting here. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. So kindly, a round of applause for my guests and the panelists as they leave. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll start with Betty. Thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Uh, Professor Mungai, thank you. You can catch up. The DJ, can you give us some good music kindly? Thank you very much. Michael, our future. God bless you. Thank you very much.